one of my readers asked me whether I ever play hooky. And it's a great question because uh, once you get to know me and how I work, you'll know that I, I work by quite a stringent schedule. I live and work by a schedule most of the time. And so people hear that or they see my calendar and they freak out. They're like, George, I could never do what you do because I'm a free spirit, you know, people might say. And I, that sounds so stressful to George. Aren't you stressed out by, by following this strict schedule? Well, let me tell you, I do play hooky and it's usually every, I don't know, two, three, four weeks that one afternoon I might take off. And I know this is going to be a popular topic for some of you because you, you feel so much relief. Oh my God, I don't want to, I don't want to work like George. I don't know how George gets it all done. I don't want to live by his schedule. How can anybody do that? That doesn't make sense. It doesn't, how can, it's not going with a flow, George. You know, it's not, it's not um, spirit led. It's not going with the intuition. George, you need to go with, you need to relax more, George. You need to go with the intuition. You need to go with the flow. So let me talk about this. What is it? What do you think it means to go with the flow? I'm really curious what you think that means. And where do you think that comes from? The go with the flow idea. I'm sure it probably arose, got popularized sometime in the 70s, <laughs> 1970s or, or something like that. But originally, go with the flow probably came somewhere from Taoism, I would say, you know, some enlightened spirituality like Taoism or something like that. Go with the flow, you know, flow, flow like water, flow with the seasons, flow, flow with life, life's intuitive flow. You just got to find that flow and just go with it, right? Go with the flow. And also maybe um, uh, from Carl Jung or some, some, someone like that, you know, to, to kind of go with the flow. But Taoism probably thousands of years ago originally came with probably that idea of, ah, you know, be in harmony with nature, be in harmony with the Tao. And by the way, those of you who don't know, my last name is pronounced cow. And some people think cow, like the farm animal. No, no. Cow as in rhymes with Tao, okay? So just think of it that way. So I, I love Lao Tzu and, you know, the, the Tao Te Ching. But what a lot of people don't realize, and of course, that Lao Tzu, Tao Te Ching, it's also where effortless action comes from. Effortless action, it sounds so wonderful to be able to accomplish uh, world-changing activities effortless, effortlessly without any hard efforting. And Alan Watts, of course, also popularized this idea in the, I don't remember when it was, 50s, 60s, 70s, something like that. So effortless action, going with the flow. How do we do that and yet accomplish as much as I do, right? So, and thank you to um, Charo, who just wrote in the chat, with respect to your productivity level, you look superhuman to me. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I if you if you followed me, like if you were to, like Buddy over here, <laughs> sat with me all day long, worked with me all day long. Y you would see me working a lot, but you would also see me taking a lot of breaks. I'd take a lot of breaks throughout the day. And you would also see me, strangely, every five minutes, every 10, sometimes 20 minutes, I would be doing the stretching, I'd be doing deep breathing and connecting with spirit again for just 30 seconds. So I'm extremely disciplined, not only with work, but with taking breaks, very, very disciplined with it. And um, I'm also very disciplined with noticing when I'm starting to tense up. And then, like I said, relaxing every five to 10 minutes, I relax and, oh, I'm tensing up again. Ah, uh, relax, go into the effortless action, go into Wu Wei. Wu Wei, you know, is the, the Taoist term for effortless action. Go into joyful productivity again. I've written a whole book about that. Uh, going into, so therefore, I get a lot done. I am working all the time with lots of breaks. People don't see that. And I'm very disciplined with when I stop work at the end of the day, when I when my end of the day is. So I'm very disciplined with when I start work, when I take breaks, when I'm releasing my tension throughout every single hour, many, many times each hour. And then, which all comes with practice because it's normal of, it's normal for us to, to, to work intensely you know, we, we don't, we aren't trained from kindergarten, from elementary school, from high school, 
from college. We aren't trained how to take many, many micro breaks every single hour. I take one every five to 10 minutes, except when I'm doing you know live videos like this. I forget because I'm so intense. But I'm, when I'm writing, when I'm drafting a sales page, when I'm creating something for all of you, when I'm doing bookkeeping, taxes, when I'm doing uh, going through my to-do list, doing emails, whatever I'm doing, I'm very quick at noticing my tension in my neck and my shoulders and then taking 30 seconds to relax and going into joyful flow once again. So because I work like that, I'm not stressed out like most people are, even though I work. I mean, I technically, if I add up all my work hours, I probably only work about 40 hours. I did add, add up all my work hours. It's somewhere between, it's somewhere around 40 actual actionable hours per week. I don't count the, the, the breaks, the, you know, the breaks I take every hour to every two hours, but actual working hours, about 40 hours a week. So just like a regular worker, except every hour I work, I'm very aware of my tension that comes up and then relaxing into joyful action, effortless action. So when I start to work, I don't feel like it. And so when people, when someone asks me, do you ever play hooky? The, the assumption is that work is painful, right? And work is not enjoyable. And so therefore, therefore playing hooky means, oh, I get this relief from not having to have pain and struggle in my life. Is that what hooky means to you? Like taking, oh my God, I don't want to follow a schedule because of following a schedule is supposed to be painful and, and struggle and doing things I don't like doing. Well, of course you, you wouldn't, who would want to follow a schedule if it's painful struggle and doing things I don't feel like doing. Now, the, the, the truth is I follow my schedule to the T every single half hour of my day is scheduled every single half hour. So you might say, well, God, that's so stressful. Well, like I said, again, if you relate to your schedule like that, of course, nobody wants to follow up a schedule like that. Why? Who, who would, if it's pain all day long, who would want to torture themselves all day long? <laughs> right. Unfortunately, some people learn how to do that. And of course they get heart attacks and that's why heart attacks are the number one strokes and heart attacks are the number one way of dying. Top, top way of dying because people haven't learned how to work with effortless action, joyful productivity, releasing the tension all day long, releasing the tension all day long. Okay. So when I come to work, I look at my schedule and I've learned to look at my schedule and go, ah, oh, I get to make this video for you. I get to write for you. I get to do my bookkeeping, even though I don't like bookkeeping. I get to do my bookkeeping. Oh, I get to do some administrative work, spreadsheets. Okay. If I were, if I were to going, if I were going with the flow, if you were to quote, uh, if you were to say it the way most people say it, if I were to go with the flow without training, and just go with the flow with my base human instincts, you know what I'd be doing all day? And if money were no issue, and if purpose and growth were no issue, meaning if I didn't care about money, purpose, or growth, then I would be playing video games all day and eating junk food all day. That's what I would be doing. And then, of course, you know, Buddy has to go on walks, so then I would get some time in nature. So my entire schedule all day schedule would be play video games, eat junk food, go on walks in nature, long, long walks with buddy in nature. That'd be my entire day. And then I would not be able to pay rent. <laughs> and then I would not be able to buy my junk food. I would not be able to uh, buy buddy food. I would not, I would be on the streets. I would therefore be struggling and, and in pain even more. <laughs> right? And, and the worst thing is I would be addicted. So being addicted to these things that I can't do, I would probably somehow get into life of crime so I can get some drugs to, to calm my addiction, to, to deal with my, my pain in my life and all these other things, right? And underneath all of that, I would feel a deep lack of purpose, like, oh, I'm not living to my potential and my purpose. So that is how go with the flow means when you are untrained about going with the flow. And then fortunately, all of us are untrained because nobody trains. Who trains us on joyful productivity from the, from the get-go? Nobody does. Nobody knows how to do it until they really, of course, there are some leadership consultants and productivity consultants who have learned 
Wu Wei and effortless action. Like myself, I've practiced, I've learned, I've, I've, I've trained myself very, very disciplined in doing it. So speaking of discipline, you might not like that word because you're a free spirit, but let me tell you, remember where go with the flow comes from? Taoism, thousands of years old. Do you know who the founder of Taoism is? Lao Tzu, right? In Chinese, it's Lao Tzu, the founder of Taoism. You know what he says? Let me read to you one of the quotes from Taoism that from him that is rarely is rarely heard. Okay, so this is the quote. I, I love this quote. The founder of Taoism says this: "Don't think that you can attain total awareness and whole enlightenment without proper discipline and practice. This is egomania. Appropriate rituals." channel your emotions and your life energy towards the light without the discipline to practice them you will tumble constantly backward into darkness in other words into watching videos all day long eating junk food you know then getting into a life of crime so you can do heroin and other drugs to calm your deep lack of purpose and an un un inability to deal with difficult emotions all of that takes life training and takes a lot of discipline, right? And therefore, this is why it's good to work with life coaches if you can, healers, um, you know, counselors to learn how to train your emotions, train your mind, and therefore to relate to your schedule in a much more healthy way. Because really, if, you're, if you don't have a schedule, really? Are you serious? To not live by a schedule is is from a trained mind to not live by a schedule is insane. It's literally not reasonable because if you want to go with the flow, it means you need to, you need to be in harmony with mother nature and being in harmony with mother nature means to recognize that mother nature is extremely disciplined. Have you noticed? Does the sun, does, does, does the sun come up only when the sun wants to, <laughs> if that were the case, our, our whole entire humanity would, would die, you know, within one generation because nothing is predictable. The sun only comes up when the sun wants to know the sun is extremely disciplined. Are the seasons predictable? Thank goodness the seasons are predictable. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to, to, far, to do farming, right? to be able to plan, you know, agriculture and, and human rituals and all that stuff. Seasons are very predictable. So Mother Nature is extremely disciplined. Sun comes up every morning, predictably. The seasons are predictable. The rivers only flow in one direction. My, my goodness, can you imagine if the rivers sometimes flow this way, sometimes flow that way? <laughs> you, could, you know, the fish would not survive, you know, and we would not survive. Um, the animals are also extremely disciplined. Have you noticed? The animals are very disciplined with when they go hunting, when they rest, when they watch out for each other, when they foster their young, it's all very predictable. That's why there's such a thing as science. That's why there's, you know, studies of, of, of nature and animals can be studies because they're predictable. In other words, they're disciplined. So is your day predictable? Like, like nature is predictable? If your day and week is not predictable, you are not in alignment with heart. You are not in harmony with nature. You want to go with the flow? You want to be a free spirit? You're not in alignment with nature. See, the problem, the problem, why is it so difficult for human beings to go with the flow? L let, me, let me tell you why. When we were animals, before we evolved to be human beings, going with the flow meant to be extremely disciplined, going with the discipline and predictability that happened with millions of years of evolution. Evolution created a very predictable schedule for animals that were able to survive. The animals that were able to survive knew that, okay, if I, if I went with this particular schedule, if I hunt in this way, in these seasons, in this day, time of day, I will be able to survive and foster my young. And so therefore they survive. But the problem is that when, he, when Homo sapiens became, became who we are, we had the added, we had the added um, layer now of reason, right? We had the added layer of consciousness. And so with that added layer, the go with the flow concept completely got thrown, thrown out the window because now we can reason and say, well, why should I go with the seasons when I could do something different? 
when I can do something different than what Mother Nature had evolved me to be. Okay, so therefore, reason throws us off base completely unless we align with reason. There's a okay, go with the flow. We're not we're no longer reasonless animals. We can reason. So if when we reason, we realize if I don't have a predictable schedule, my life will be thrown into chaos. And if my life is thrown into chaos, being a free spirit means nothing <laughs> because I can't pay the rent. I, I'm not living in deep purpose. And reason also tells us that true personal growth, growing in character, growing in courage, in uh, love, in wisdom, in joy, growing in all in forgiveness, growing in all these things takes practice. And practice means stretching outside of your comfort zone again and again and again until your comfort zone gets larger. So what is a free spirit? What does go with the flow? It is meaningless unless you realize what mother nature, how, how disciplined mother nature is and how reason tells us that, oh, to grow truly means to stretch outside our comfort zone. Guess what? It means to be uncomfortable. So if you haven't learned to deal with negative emotions, you can't practice being uncomfortable because you, can't, you, you, you don't know how to deal with negative emotions. So that's really number one is do you know how to deal with negative emotions? And so I've learned to, to deal with negative emotions means to accept. And this is, I, I, this is a whole other video that I should do at some point. But let me come back to whether I play hooky. Right? Yes, I play hooky, but only once in a while when I say, ah, I'm going to just do something out of the ordinary. And, you know, uh, my wife uh, is taking a day off today because a, a client or two canceled. Well, let me just go ahead and take a day off as well and go and hang out with her and we can go and, you know, do some, uh, usually we do, we do, we do, we do useful things like, you know, go grocery shopping or something, but we also spend some extra time in nature, et cetera. But so yes, I play hooky every now and then, but playing hooky is only meaningful if one lives by a schedule most of the time, then, 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 it's, then it's fun. Then it's meaningful to play hooky. But if you're playing hooky all the time, then you need to realize that, oh, maybe I need to practice relating better to my schedule again. To not look at my schedule with such intimidation, overwhelm, and negative emotions. Oh, I got to practice dealing with my negative emotions. When it comes to my, my the schedule is just your friend. It's, it's, it's your assistant. Why are you so intimidated by a schedule? Your schedule is simply, okay, if I do this and this and this, I will tend to get these results. So why am I do not doing this and this and this? It's, if I do ABC, I will get XYZ results. <laughs> That's just reason and logic. So if I put ABC into my schedule, I'm mo more likely to do ABC. That's it. That's all it means. If I, if I want to fit all these things into my life, if I want to fit all these things into my business and to be able to take breaks and to be able to do all these things, that means you need a schedule. I mean, th th there's no there's no way around having to live by a schedule if you want to live and maximize your life's purpose. You have to live by a schedule. That's why all the successful people do. Do you know a single successful person while they are achieving their success? If yes, when someone is successful and they're retired, they don't have to live by a schedule or a very very light one. But when one is still in that mode of achieving success. Do you know anybody who doesn't, who is actually doing it successfully, but doesn't live by a schedule? It's insane. Nobody I know. Nobody. Every successful person, or before they reach success, they realize they have to live by a schedule. And that means we have to learn to relate with more joy and with more wisdom to our schedule. It's not, oh, my schedule is my taskmaster. Oh, I don't love, uh, my schedule is my a mean boss. No, come on, your schedule is your assistant. That's all it is. Your schedule is your assistant. You get to design however you want to. You get to, you get to take as many breaks as you want to. So why do you have to play hooky? Play hooky means to not live by a schedule. You see what I mean? Like it doesn't make sense anymore, except for the once in a while, then, then it becomes fun. So anyway, <laughs> a lot, a lot in this video. I hope this was beneficial to you. Thank you so much for your comments, for joining me uh, live. Lisa, JJ, JJ is actually my cousin. <laughs> okay, JJ. Uh, Erica, Fabi, May, May is my, my neighbor, actually. Uh, Maria Corinne, Marco, 
uh, Ray, uh, Rachel. I don't see everybody here. Um, let's see, Farhad, uh, Farhad, thank you, Charo and Captain. Um, and so let's see here. Uh, so Farhad says, you know, I, I spent time making a lesson plan for my class and it took about 15 hours to do. How do I reduce that time? You know, so when you are new to doing a particular process, like, like creating a course or writing a book, right? When you're new to that process, you don't really know how long it'll take you. So there's really two ways around it. You can you, you need to start writing. This is what I do, right? I, with any process that I, I think I'm going to do again in the future, I start writing down a process document to say, okay, when I create my course, I do this first and then I do that. And then I do that. You got to write it down and then you got to time yourself to say, okay, process step one took 15 minutes. Process step two took 45 minutes. Wow. That took a lot of time. If you write down your process for whatever you do regularly and you write down the time it takes, then you can go, well, gosh, process step two took 45 minutes or it took 33 hours. Then when you analyze your process, you can go, can I be more efficient with step number two? Okay. How can I be more efficient? Then you reason, you reason it out by yourself or with a coach say, okay, how can process step two not take three hours, but can it only take one and a half hours? How can we be creative to do that? So it's very reasonable. You just write down the document with your process, how much time things actually took you and reason out. How can each step take less time? How can it be more efficient? Can you outsource some of it or can you automate some of it? So it's, it's, it's actually quite simple. I mean, when I say it out, that's, and that's literally what I do as well, but you just have to do it. You just have to realize that, oh, with, with, with planning, everything can be done with planning. Everything can be made more efficient. That's all. So Farhad, I hope that helps. Okay. This video has gone on long enough. Thank you for joining me again. I hope this is helpful to you. Remember if you want to go with the flow, you have to be really disciplined because mother nature is very disciplined and going with the flow. Um, and realize that being disciplined can be joyful. It can be about taking many breaks. It can be about effortless action, effortless action. By the way, one more thing I forgot to say is that every time I show up for my work, I don't feel like it in the beginning. This is what real discipline means, right? Discipline is only needed for the first five minutes. That's it. For one hour of work, discipline is only needed for the first five minutes of saying, like, okay, I don't feel like doing it. I never feel like doing this before I started making this video. I didn't feel like making this video. I was scared. I was like, am I really ready? Maybe I should do it later in the afternoon when I feel more ready. No, it's on my schedule today because today my video is earlier because later we have, we have to go to Costco to su stock up on some supplies. So we had to go to Costco earlier, which means I have to do this video now instead of later. So I don't feel like doing this video right now, but aren't you glad I showed up anyway? The first five minutes took discipline to say, okay, I don't feel like doing it, but I'm going to take some deep breaths. I'm going to remember that everything is going to be okay. I remember that like abundant love and creativity is always with me. Abundant, abundant, anything is always with you in every moment. Did you know this? Did you know this? Any characteristic you want for yourself is always with you in every single moment. If you claim it to say abundant love, abundant compassion, abundant creativity, abundant joy is with me right now. So I'm going to act as if that's true. That, that the, that's the only time I agree with fake it till you make it fake it till you make it. I don't like how it's applied in most places, but I, I like it here. Act as if the virtue you want is true in the moment. Now I'm just going to falteringly act as true unperfectly imperfect, you know, imp unperfect, right? Imperfectly act as if that virtue is within me. And if I imperfectly act as if, eventually one day I will live more and more into that virtue. So if I don't feel like doing this video, I'm going to act as if joy and compassion were with me. Now I'm going to act as if creativity were with me now. And I start, I start go live. I start making the video and within a few minutes now I'm enjoying it. Now I'm going with the flow, truly effortless action of being able to connect with you. I act as if I, um, I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, I, I, I remember the connection that I can, I get to have with you, even though I can't see any of you here in the beginning, nobody was here. I act as if you were there 
And so all this acting as if is, is about virtue and about connection and therefore allows me to now be in the flow talking with you. That's truly then you get to find the creative flow after the first five minutes of acting as if. So I hope this helps and I wish you well as you find your creative flow with your schedule, relating to it with more joy. Take care. Have a great day.